Hey y'all, how you perking? I hope you perking good. So, part two. This is a part two. Part two of the random questions video. We've gotten through so many questions already and now we are working through the second half of them. Um, I don't know if there's a whole half left to go, but there's more to go that I didn't feel like would fit into the first video. So here we are and here we go. Um, yeah, let's get right on into this. As I like to tell people, I'm a licensed mental health clinician as well as a spiritual intuitive. And in these videos, we read the tea with the tarot. And these videos are always meant to be helpful, not hateful. So if you're down with that, join the family. Okay, thanks. Let's get into it. <laughs> no, I'm not on anything. I'm just like this. I'm a triple fire sign, y'all. Can I help it? No. Danny T. Why did you go into the behavioral health field? How do your friends and family feel about you doing tarot on YouTube? Um, went into behavioral health because I basically have always been in this one way or another in my life. I've always been that person that people go to when they want to vent or need advice or whatever. Um, when they need to ha have a listening ear or somebody that's compassionate and cares. Um, so I've always kind of been like that. And I've always been interested in human behavior and human thought and emotion and things like that. So that's kind of how I got into it. In terms of how my family and friends feel about YouTube um first of all I don't have very many friends so my friends are family um and I guess they just think I'm a weird little one and um they don't really think about it too much and it seems like a, a new thing to them probably and in the grand scheme of things it's you know a very small thing that they would think about as it relates to me I mean I have six and a half thousand subscribers so i wouldn't really classify myself as a youtuber per se um so i don't know maybe there's not much significance to it at this time donna gerhardt what makes you say what was i thinking when you look back on your life i couldn't find a light-hearted way to answer this i sat there and thought about it thought about it thought about it thought about it and the best I got is just some of the ways that I used to be um, that, again, I'll discuss in another video. I talked about this kind of a little bit in part one, things that have come up that I would discuss in another video because it's not really lighthearted. Um, and so and just to skip out on having to give trigger warnings and stuff like that on this video, that might be another day, another time kind of thing. Um, but if we're talking silly, stupid stuff, I mean... What were my parents thinking by letting me go to picture day on school wearing stuff like crushed velvet, uh, fiery shirts with rainbow suspenders and purple paisley pants? Why would you do that to me, mama? Why? Why would you let me do such? Mother. Mama. Grammy. That's how we call her sometimes because of the grandkids that call her Grammy. So we're like, Grammy. Grammy. All right. Life path number. I find them fascinating. <laughs> You're going to laugh at this. Um, remember how I said I'm a triple fire sign? So I'm all about the go, go, go and independent and like got to get in there. Well, I'm also a life path number one, <laughs> which is more of that same energy. So I'm just damned. Really. Allie B. Okay. Julia Claire Taylor. Worst and best purchase you've made. It can be big or small. Love you, B. Love you, too. Mwah. Um, I wrote this down because I had to think about it. The best purchase that I've ever made was to get my face tattoos. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight face tattoos. Both my eyebrows, upper liner, bottom liner, and lip liner, which, you know, you can't tell here. Um, the lip liner was just ancillary, happened later. Don't, don't really care about that. But these six up here that I got... Uh, best purchase I ever made. I got them because, as I've mentioned in previous videos, I have trichotillomania where I pull out my hair. That's why I always have to wear my hair short because if I try to grow it out any longer, one, it's not going to grow, and two, it looks very thin and dead and sad like someone who's, you know, in stage chemotherapy treatments, you know, and I'm not saying that to be disrespectful to anybody, but you know what I mean about like, um, if, if you know what I mean, you know what I mean is all I'm going to say with that. Um, and so having 
those places tattooed makes all the difference for me because as I have brow hairs out that gives me a bit of a shadow back behind the brow hair so that I have something of substance there um, that still looks like I have hair if I rub it off same with with my lashes if I have any lashes that I scrub out then having you know lines there makes me feel like I have some sort of color definition to my eyes to speak of um wish I could do tattoos that have long beautiful hair my sister my twin sister twin sister has very long hair all the way down her ass crack and looking beautiful and all that and I've never been able to have that and it's one of the things I wish I always had but um so wigs <laughs> um but, but yeah, so that was my best purchase because it, it really helped me with some of that, like some of the dysphoric aspects to having trichotillomania. The worst purchase ever. I don't know if this counts, but I'm gonna put it on my damn list. The worst purchase ever is that I, I am paying out of pocket over $3,000 again, out of pocket because I don't have the type of insurance that would do this, that would help me at all, out of pocket for septum surgery for um, an allergist that said, oh, you know, your septum's really crooked, let's straighten out your septum. Well, I'm paying all that money out of pocket that I don't have to be paying on anything makes you broke as fuck, just for my nose to be worse than it was before. So I'm just saying that I'm not a doctor, so I'm not telling you if you are have been told that you need that surgery, I'm not telling you not to get your surgery I'm just talking about my experience and my experience alone so don't be twisting that and taking that anywhere I'm just asking about answering a question about the worst purchase I've made and I consider that a bad fucking purchase so that's what I'm saying there okay anywho Brianna J what is your favorite place to shop I think a lot of the tops you wear are super cute hope you have a wonderful day you're very sweet, first of all. Second of all, a lot of the shirts that I own, I've owned for decades, like bottom in college and stuff like that a long, long time ago because I'm old. Um, but whenever I shop, it is 99% of the time I shop on eBay because everything is pre-worn, pre-used, and that means it's less expensive, less expensive. So, um, I don't like to be cheap, but I have to be frugal with my money because I'm a girl on a budget. So, um, eBay. But the brands that I buy on eBay, I buy, like, for work, a lot of Banana Republic type stuff. Um, for non-work, I guess, everything else. Uh, stuff like Zara. Um, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I just find things on eBay. Like, I'll type in what I want and, you know, I don't know. Like, <laughs> I'm not sure. Sometimes I'll be like, white lace top, you know, small or extra small kind of thing. And, you know, whatever, whatever comes up, comes up and I'll look at it. <laughs> I don't know. There's not, there's not a really cool definitive answer I can give you on that. But thank you for the compliment. All right. Hi, B. Are you able to feel spirit through animals? Rosie Nobrega or Nobrega. Um... I feel like there's a lot of spirit that comes through animals, so yeah, I would say I could. Now, does that mean I could necessarily channel messages from animals? I don't know about that. I've never tried. Um, but in terms of feeling spirit through animals, yeah. Tara Brown, have you had any paranormal experience or seen anything odd to your psychic connection? If so, we need to hear the story. Yeah, kind of as I said in part one, I'm not really the seeing and hearing type with that um so not so much any kind of experiences that i think i've had honestly and I'm, I'm being honest i can't know for sure if it was a psychic experience or if it was part of um sleep paralysis <laughs> which if anybody's ever had that i feel you and i'm so sorry that you've had to go through that too um so i can't know for sure if it's one versus the other. So I kind of chalk it up to the sleep paralysis, honestly. Um, Lori Roth. Not sure. I don't know why I'm, I'm yelling your names. Like I'm like literally yelling at you. I don't, I forgive me. I, 
it's probably even if I try to change it, it's probably gonna keep going like that. I'm I'm probably gonna just keep yelling. I don't know. Sorry, 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 sorry. Okay. Uh, not sure if somebody already asked, but how long have you been reading the tarot cards? Seven years. Uh, 2013. What was your favorite cartoon as a kid? I cannot pick. Uh, Mayra L. Mayra? Myra? I don't want to say your name wrong. <laughs> um, I really can't tell. I know I used to love the hell out of those, like, Bugs Bunny Looney Tunes cartoons when I was growing up. I used to love that. Um, I always also used to love things that came on PBS like Arthur and, and uh, Magic School Bus and stuff like that uh, as a kid um, so the educational stuff too but I don't know I can't really remember I liked movies like cartoon Disney movies and stuff too Beauty and the Beast my favorite Woo! Susan Selko Millman favorite group slash song favorite food slash drink um Wow, I can't think of favorite group slash song because there's so much music that I like. It's incredible. I can't even I can't even tease that out. I kind of talked about that in uh, one of the other videos that I've done like this in the past. Um, and favorite food or drink? Again, I know these are cop out answers, but like I've said before, breakfast foods, desserts, um, Mexican food, and Southern comfort food. Outside of those categories. It is nearly impossible to hone it in. I'm one of those people that, like, I'll eat the hell out of, like, Oreos every day for two months. And then I'm like, okay, I'm over it now. And then I'm not into those. And then randomly I'll be, like, eating pedophores from, like, the public Publix bakery for, you know, as often as I can afford them. Because it's, like, 99 cents each freaking pedophore. Like, what the hell? You know, that's a lot of money. But um, when it adds up, if you're going to be a fat ass like me... Um, and I say that in a joking way, like, come on, Ugh, I hope people are not going to take that as like, you know, some shaming thing. Like I, I call myself that, you know, at, when I'm being silly to myself. Um, so again, y'all don't be taking everything so damn seriously. Hopefully you don't. Um, but yeah, I, so I'm a moody eater with stuff like that. It's hard to say a favorite. It really is. Categories, I gotcha. But favorites, individual, I don't gotcha. All right, same person. Uh, let's see. What does your other half do? Have you ever traveled outside the United States? Um, Julio works for UPS. He's a UPS driver, so he's got a lot of work to do <laughs> right now. As everybody's ordering a ton of things online instead of shopping in store. Um, I have traveled outside of the United States one time. I went to Canada when I was a young kid, probably like 10 years old or something. I don't remember hardly anything about my trip. The only thing I remember is feeling like it was cold up there, but everybody else was burning up. And I went into a post office and I heard somebody say, it's like the States out here. It's like Florida because they were so hot. And I was like, it is cold. I'm in long pants and long sleeves. And that's when I realized that I would always have to live in the South because I could never cut it living in the North because I could never acclimate to that weather. <laughs> so, Peggy Murphy, what is your favorite scent? Musk, 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 sweet musk, clean musk, white musk, musk, yes. Very much so. My boyfriend and my... um sisters say that I like to smell like old people and if that's what old people smell like bring it on yes let me roll in it put me in a home just I want all of that then yes again don't take me seriously with all the things that I say for I feel like I have to disclaim every time I say something that's like off color humor or whatever you know this silliness but I'm just being silly here no offense no offense Rachel B, would you rather explore space or the bottom of the ocean? Both of those ideas give me incredible amounts of anxiety. Neither. I think both sound absolutely terrifying to have to explore. If you forced me to pick one, because I had literally no other decision, I would say space. But terrifying. So, no. <laughs> Cheryl Gerritsen, do you have siblings? Are you the middle child? I do have siblings. 
I have a sister that is one minute older than me only because they yanked her chubby butt first off of being on top of me in the C-section. Um, and then I have a brother who is 19 years older than me by the same two parents only because they messed up. Um, and the doctor told them that they were too old to safely continue to be on birth control pills. And, um, and uh, people in their 40s in the 1980s apparently um, were not too keen on the ideas of other contraceptives. So here I am and here we are. Woo! So, yeah. <laughs> Jenny B, 927. When you do your intro, you say you're a mental health clinician. What's the difference in a clinician and a doctor? I am not a doctor, so that is a big difference there. I say clinician because there's so many different types of mental health professions out there that I say I'm a mental health clinician because people are like, oh, well, you know, you can be a licensed professional counselor. You can be a licensed social worker. You know, you can be all kinds of different things. You can be a behavioral interventionist. You you can be a alcohol and drug counselor or addiction specialists. You know, you can be, you can specialize in just about anything and be just about anything. There's just so many different things. You can be a rehabilitative counselor. You know, you can, it's just, it's endless. It's endless. So I say licensed mental health clinician because that kind of covers like a broad spectrum of different types of things that you can be the reason why I don't specifically just say exactly what the background is is because again y'all are wonderful people but the internet is a shitty shitty place um oh wait I'm supposed to stop with the cursing um the internet can be crap and so the internet likes to take things like that and they like to look up your licensing board and send mail to your licensing board to try to get your license revoked and try to dox you publicly to spill all of your information and stuff to people on the internet in a way that they can start coming after you and they'll know where you live and all this kind of stuff. You know what I mean? Like the internet does mean sick stuff. And so I tend to not say exactly what I do as one little element of trying to keep people from, from like falsely accusing me of some kind of crap and sending some bogus stuff to where I get investigated and you know get my license revoked or things like that like I take my career very seriously I take my working life very seriously because I am a person who chooses chooses not to have children because my career is my baby and doing this kind of stuff to help people is my baby. It's what always has been my baby, even before I was an adult. And the thought of somebody, you know, trying to take that away from me, I couldn't have it. So sure, people could probably do that. And sure, me saying this right now might sound like a challenge to some hacker out there and they might figure it out and they might do it. And if they do it, then fine. My worst dream has come true or one of them has come true and I'll figure out how to make it forward anyway with a revoked ass license or whatever if they try to do some crap. You know, I'll keep forward and I'll keep doing what I'm doing. You know, people hearing this, taking this as a potential um, challenge, it's not going to stop me from doing the work that I do if you try to do some asinine bullshit like that but three 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 on the clock <laughs> good that makes me feel better three 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 on the clock right now right now means being surrounded by the holy trinity father son and holy ghost right now so being you know that's that makes me feel that makes me feel good that's very connected thank you thank you thank you spirit for, for doing that right now um so yeah that's why i don't that's why i say licensed mental health clinician wow whew, that was a long explanation for that uh, I can't be short-winded. Can you tell? Can any of y'all tell? I cannot say anything quickly. And so if you are subscribed, then you understand that and you're okay with that. And if you absolutely hate that, then I understand if you leave because I will not change for you because I can't. And I'm sorry, but I'm also not sorry for that. <laughs> okay. Amber Malinowski? Malinowski? Hope I'm saying your name right. 
Who are you? Where are you from? Where do you live? Do you have a boyfriend? What's your favorite color? How did you get into readings? And what's your sun ascendant and moon sign? Okay, so you asked a lot of them. Um, some of them I've already touched on. Do have a boyfriend? Yes. Where am I from and where do I live? South Carolina in the United States. In the South. Who am I? Good question. I'm learning every day. Um, what's my favorite color? I love cerulean blue and that kind of like, can you see? Aqua blue kind of colors here. I love those colors. I love those colors. Um, how did I get into readings? Picked up my first tarot deck in 2013. Sun sign is an Aries. Moon sign is um, Sagittarius. And rising sign is Leo. If that's not as obvious as it comes. Yeah. It's dreadfully, dreadfully obvious that I'm a triple fire sign. <laughs> Yes. Thank you, Amber. Um, Mary Holland, what are your other hobbies? Keep on being awesome, girl. Love you. Love you, too. <laughs> Did you catch it? Did you catch it? Catch it. <laughs> um, other hobbies. Uh, yeah, I love cooking and I love eating. I've said that, that one before. Love cooking and love eating. That's a big main one. But I'm a self-improvement junkie as well. So I guess that's something I didn't say in the first video that I would classify as a hobby for me. So, yes. Kay Donald says, no questions from me, just sending love and hugs to you, B, and all the Perkin viewers family. You're so sweet. Hugs and love to you, too. <laughs> sweet cookie, do you model? If not, you should. No, ma'am, or no, sir, or no, whoever you are. Never modeled. Um, that is very kind of you to think that I should. But people do not take 33-year-old, 5'1 people and make them models. They really don't. And if they do, they probably have such high standards that they would make me feel like complete shite about myself. And I don't need any help with self-esteem issues. So, no thank you. No thank you. Very kind though. Sim P, did you always want chihuahuas or did it just happen? I've always wanted little dogs. I love little dogs because to me, little dogs stay puppies forever. They never grow up into big dogs. I love big dogs, too. I love all animals. But mm, I'll say I love all animals. There's some animals that just freak me out, and I would rather them keep their distance. But um, but I, I, want, I want all the chihuahuas. I want all the chihuahuas. I have two chihuahuas down here right now. I think the third one's probably shedding on the back of my couch as we speak in the living room. Lucy Dawson, where did you get the light that shines on the, the amazing color patterns on your wall? I love it and would really like to get one. Back there, Amazon. Um, I don't even know. Let me see if I can real quick go in here and see if it tells me um, if I can scroll and see what the name of the damn thing was. Because it's it's just some little cheapy Amazon thing. I want to say I paid like maybe 13 bucks for it, if that. Um, I don't even know what it's called, to be honest. So I'm just, okay. Oh, God, it's one of those with a long name. So just, just it says Bluetooth Disco Ball Lights. Nine colors, LED party lights, DJ sound activated rotating lights, wireless phone connection with Bluetooth speaker, MP3, play and remote for home KTV wedding dance show. Wow, okay. Amazon, disco ball lights, nine LED colors. <laughs> Very cheap. Very cheap, but effective. Yes. Yes. Um, Sailor XYZ. Have you ever done a reading that actually scared you? Like you were asked to do a reading where, um, reading or were reading for yourself and some terrifying stuff came up that made you back away from the cards? Good question. Fortunately, no. However, I have done other spiritual things in the past, like with automatic writing and things where, yes, and one sent me into a full-blown anxiety attack and I have never, I closed that a gap there and did all my revocations and I never tried that seriously ever again uh scared me too much with that automatic writing so not with the cards but yes 
Nora Bolas, do, do you remember your first kiss? I actually don't. I know who was my first kiss. 10th grade boyfriend, first boyfriend, basically. Um, but I don't remember it, no. Which might be for the best. Might be for the best. J.M. Cole, if you had a theme song, what would it be? This is one that I sat there and I thought about and I thought about and I thought about and I thought about and I honestly cannot think. I honestly just, I hate to not give you an answer, but I honestly could not think of one and I tried. But you asked another question that says, what is your pet peeve? And I do know that. My pet peeve, biggest pet peeve, and I don't care if y'all classify this as a pet peeve or not, it is for me and that is what it is and that is what I say, is that... Um, I cannot stand lack of self-awareness and insight. I, it really bothers me. It shouldn't bother me that much. I know everybody's on their own journey. They're all on their own process. Everybody is doing the best they can with what they have at the time. But it really bothers me when people are not self-aware and lack insight about themselves and what they do and how they come across and all that kind of stuff and that they make no effort to figure that out that really really bothers me that's my biggest one for sure ruthie robles who is your celebrity crush what celebrity would you mate what celebrity would you marry what what celebrity would you make your personal slave and then she wrote in parentheses in all fun and not to be taken seriously people are way too sensitive so this was one i wrote down because i had to think about it um so Again, like with slaves, like she said, um, just all in good fun, being silly, not being serious or whatever. Um, I would say Leslie Jordan because he is hilarious and I would want him to just be there like, I don't know, being his little funny, entertaining self all the time, helping to bring laughter and light to a situation. So, you know, I, I don't know if that counts for the question, but that's what I'm putting it down. For who I would marry, I know that this is probably um, cheating because it's not a celebrity. It's like a literal character from a movie, but The Witcher, <laughs> you know, Netflix's Witcher or whatever, The Witcher, not necessarily that actor, although I have nothing against him, but marry the witcher specifically because I feel like I would always be protected and I would always be provided for and I get, would get to travel on great adventures and I'd get to look at him all day, you know, so that's my choice. Okay, and then mate. Um... In terms of celebrity mate, I put down Michael B. Jordan, um, Killmonger from uh, Black Panther, you know, the bad guy, I guess you could say, in Black Panther that, you know, in some ways isn't really the bad guy, it's just somebody that was, you know, hurt and went through some difficult things in life and um, who wouldn't feel the way that he felt, you know, but he did not good things, I, you know obviously um but yeah michael b jordan yes <laughs> okay next question oh my phone reset i talked so long on that okay it's okay we found it we're back we're back we're back we're back we're cool so i don't know if we're cool but we're back so favorite keanu reeves movie do you find him sexy as fuck like i do or do you prefer another poison the older the wine <laughs> ruthie you're fun. Um, favorite Keanu Reeves movie would probably be either The Matrix or Constantine. Um, and yes, I do think he's smixy. Um, so he would be a good poison, yes. Uh, let's see. What's your favorite book if you like to read? If not, what's your favorite movie? Um, Ruthie. So again, um, the Harry Potter se series really were my favorite books. They still are. I know that J.K. Rowling's in some hot water right now about some of her um, disappointing stances on some important issues, but those books were and still are my favorite, and that's just that. She also asked, she's got a lot of questions here, white wine or red wine? Um, I don't really drink wine, but I guess white wine. Well, I like my dad's wine better. My dad has dabbled making wine before, and I like his wines. 
But yeah, if I had to pick a wine, I'd say a Riesling because they're light and sweet. So she also asked if you could travel a week to your dream destination, all paid for and totally free. Um, what would you do and who would you bring? Um, I would want to go to like the Maldives, you know, where they have that bioluminescent water where at night, you know, you can swish through the water and it like glows like a lightning bug's butt, you know, like that kind of thing. That's what I would love. <laughs> Are you single? Nope. Got a boyfriend. All right, Laura Luke, you're also asking about vacations. Cool. What kind of vacation did you have or take as a child? We went to the beach sometimes, but, I mean, we didn't really go on a lot of vacations. My parents were in their 40s whenever I was born, and they were tired. <laughs> they had already raised the son, and the son grew up and moved out of the home before they ever found out they were pregnant with twins. So they were older and tired, and they didn't really want to go a whole lot of places. Um, any embarrassing moments? So many that that would have to be its own video. Good Lord. <laughs> uh, what's my favorite type of vacation? Uh, the mountains. I want to be in the mountains. I am not that much of a beach person. I'm not shitting on the beach, but I am not much of, the, of a beach person. I want the mountains. I like it to be slightly cooler weather like October in the mountains in like a warm mineral springs. Oh, yes. Yes. When's the last time I took a vacation? Ha! <laughs> Years. Psh. Going controversial. Jeffree Star or Patrick Star as your new BFF. It would be a true friendship. Neither of them would betray nor backstab nor be fake. Who would you pick? And who would you think would be more fun to be around in real life? Well, I don't necessarily know either of them, so it would be hard to say, but I think I would lean towards Patrick Star. Um, pretty sure I would. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Laura Luke, if one card is accidentally missing from your tarot deck, does it alter the reading? Not really, because with tarot cards, they don't just have one meaning apiece. They have, like, probably, like, ten readings... 10 readings, 10 meanings each card, um, like lots of different meanings for each card. Um, so if you're missing a card uh, that stands for one thing and they really need, spirit really needs you to pull a card that has that kind of meaning, you have other options in the deck. So obviously it would be ideal to have all the cards in the deck, yeah, but you could still do one if you were missing it. Um, if you were missing it for that one time, that's understandable. If you know for sure your dog ate the Queen of Pentacles and that there's no way that card's coming back except through a poop shoot, then I would advise that you buy another deck rather than just continue using other cards to stand in place for that poor poop queen. Okay? Just saying. <laughs> oh, my brain works weird. Okay, wet pink contemporary. I know you've been doing a lot of heavy readings lately, and I see your, how you're affected. What do you do to cleanse after the reading? Those revocations, like I said. Mm, yeah. I don't know if I said that, and that kind of sounded like uh, Sling Blade, but that, mm -hmm, like, that was kind of creepy. I, like, the Kool-Aid man, yeah, yeah, like, busting through the door or something. Like, what's wrong with me? I swear, I swear, I swear. Um... <laughs> I don't know if it was this video or the part one where I talked about the revocations, um, but like I have some revocations and stuff that I will read out and make sure that I have all negativity off. Um, I'll do things like saging and praying and Reiki energy cleansing and all kinds of things like that. But I really do, I, I really do kind of use all the tools uh, in the toolkit for that. After those heavy readings. I sure do. Allison Michelle. Which well known psychic do you think is full of shit? Well. That's a question. First. To be fair. I don't really know of a lot of well known psychics. Um, I don't really follow any well known psychics. Um, so I, I don't know that I could say that. I do know that there have been some psychics throughout my life that I have watched on video or I have spoken to directly that I felt like something didn't sit right with me. And I thought maybe there were some things that they were 
either expanding on that weren't completely truthful or that they were, you know, pushing a little farther than they should to be honest or things like that. Um, but I don't remember what their names were because there are people that I at that point was like, never mind you then. And then I wouldn't, you know, watch their content anymore. So honestly, I don't even know who those are. But if I'm trying really hard to think about like psychic psychics that people are, that are well known. I'm having trouble even thinking of any. There was that one um, woman that I wasn't so sure on. So I don't know that I would necessarily say that I'd call her like full of shit, but that I wasn't so sure about her. Um, I think she's passed away now. Is it Sylvia Brown? Sylvia Brown? Is that one? Sandra Brown's an author, right? Sylvia Brown is the one that was a psychic, right? I mean, again, and I, I wouldn't be necessarily bashing her, but there was just something that never felt quite right about her. And I don't know what it was. Um, to me personally, and I could be wrong, there felt like there was a certain egocentrism about her that felt like she cared more about what people thought of her and how highly they looked up to her than maybe she did in terms of feeling like empathy and compassion towards people and wanting to really really help them is what it felt like to me and I could have been receiving that wrong and let's not send hate to her especially she's deceased I mean why would we even say anything hateful to somebody alive or deceased but uh if I had to pick somebody that felt you know not quite right I would probably say her. Um, but again, I, I don't know. I don't know. Ah, oh, B-R-I-M. This one is another one I could not think of an answer for. If you can disvent one thing, what would it be? Like, you know, invent something versus get rid of something that's been invented. What would it be? I thought about it so long and so hard and I couldn't think. I don't know. Nothing's come to mind. I just, I don't know why. I just can't put my finger on something for that i'm sorry i can't okay jenna curie what is your most random hidden talent i thought about this one long and hard and i have an answer for it i am the queen of after cooking knowing the exact right size tupperware that will fit the leftovers to put in the fridge i'm good at it man i'm good at it Okay, that is my talent. I will go far in life with this talent. I can look at that pot. Oh, let me look at that spaghetti. Mm. This Tupperware right here is the exact right size for what we need for that spaghetti. Yes, yes, I'm good at that, man. Some people get a Tupperware and they got so much space left over. Too big. Some people get a Tupperware. Oh, man, it's too much. I need another Tupperware. No, no. No, no. I got the right. Tupperware. Tupperware clean. Yes. <laughs> what color is your toothbrush? I have one of those spin brushes that have all kinds of colors on it, but I guess the, the primary color on the shaft of the brush is an aqua color. <laughs> one of my favorite colors. Yes. Noel Hernandez. Best, tr best drunken memory. Um, Again, I don't... Like, I'm not a big drinker, although, obviously, when I was younger, I experimented a lot with drinking because, you know, you do that when you're a kid, and you're like, oh, this is fun, this is cool, and then, and then it's like, it starts not to be, but, um, when I, my first time being drunk ever is probably my best drunken memory because it has the most like inside jokes around it um where it was with my cousin Shelly and um she's four years older than me and she um got some rum from her grandma's uh stash and um we took it to our grandma's house and I remember this clearly because I remember being like, oh, why is the rum gone? And be like, what? 
And doing all of that, and this was long before the Pirates of the Caribbean came out, where that became a really big catchphrase thing that Johnny Depp would say as Captain Jack Sparrow. And so we died when those movies came out, and he was saying that because she's like, oh my God, it's you! Because that's what I was saying when <laughs> I was like, I said it first, I said it first, but I didn't make it famous. Um, and I had apparently found two roly-poly bugs, and I put them in an empty fish bowl, and I had named them Herman and Sherman and I was belligerently walking around with Herman and Sherman and I loved them so much and I had so much you know just love and care for them but I kept dropping the bowl and it was at nighttime at my grandma's trailer where she had like a um like a security system and if you drop something loud it would register as somebody trying to break in and so it kept setting off the alarm and the police would call and then it would be like what the hell is going on back there you know and Shelly's like nothing nothing sorry we just this sorry we just that and she's like stop it stop it B. you know because I'm like but Herman and Charmin ah! you know and so it's just yeah yeah I don't know. It's not, I mean, it's not like if y'all are asking for best memories like this and you're waiting for me to be like, so me and my best friend Paris Hilton went out to a club one night and we were rich as hell. And we, ha like, I can't do that. I don't have stories like that. That's for bougie people, which is fine. More power to them. But I don't live that kind of life. So I got to talk about what I got, okay? I got to talk about what I got. And I got Herman and Sherman in an empty fishbowl in a trailer busting the alarm off several times about to get spanked by my grandma that's what i had that's what i had if she could catch me she only had one leg so try try no i'm just okay y'all again don't take me too seriously she really did only have one leg she had uh one of them amputated due to gangrene from um diabetes and i took care of her during that time so that's serious but um but you know i'm just being silly and ridiculous here because i can so yes um, Wendy Log Logsdon, what made you realize you were intuitive? We went over that. Um, so I won't repeat a whole lot, but I basically have always known that I was intuitive in some sort of way. Always sensitive. Jenna Sabati? I don't know how to say your name, I'm sorry! I hope, I really, I got really, with the yelling, would the yelling be? I can't, I cannot help myself. If you could trade your life with one person that ever lived or is living, who would it be? Did I write this down? Yes. Matthew Ricard. Um, he is a French monk who is deemed the happiest man on earth. So I suppose I would want to be the happiest, wisest man alive. I think that that might be someone to trade with. She also asked, um, who is one YouTuber that you would absolutely love to collab with to give them a reading? And I picked one, but it was hard, so I had runners up. So, I picked one, Raw Beauty Christie. Oh, my God. I love Raw Beauty Christie. I really do. If she ever knew I existed, I would probably pee my pants, cry, and then pee some more. And then I would no longer have any water content left in my body because of the crying and the peeing. It would be that serious. Raw Beauty Christie. Raw Beauty Crispy. <laughs> okay, anyway. Raw Baby Crispy. Yay, congrats. Okay. Um, but my little, uh, my others I have written down. It would be wonderful, awesome, fun to give Jenna Marbles a reading. Um, Amelia Fart a reading. Uh, Nady from Pop Lux a reading. Kathleen Lights a reading because she's so into um, astrology and things like that. Uh, it would be awesome. It would be awesome. Um, yes. So, uh, Rita G had several questions here. What is your favorite indulgence? Fancy desserts. Ugh. Fancy desserts, man. Creme brulee, pedophores, like all these French Parisian dessert names that I can't pronounce to save my ever living southern soul. But, <laughs> yes. If you had one wish, what would it be that I would want? And this sounds hokey, but screw you if you think it's hokey because this is my answer. I want everyone to be 100% healed because when you're 100% healed, you are happy. You find meaning in life. You have purpose in life. You don't hurt others. You make responsible and good decisions. All of that. So for everybody to be 100% healed. 
Rita also asks, are there any creatures that weird you out? Any underwater creatures? Yes, underwater creatures. Ah. Have you seen your spirit guides? I don't really see things but blue specks. If I see blue specks of light, that's my spirit guides. What's your earliest memory? Um, <laughs> literally, and I'm not even kidding. My earliest memory is um, that my mom changed a pee diaper on me. And then I went and in my new diaper hid behind a door in my fake play kitchen pooped in it and went directly back to her to get changed again because it was at the point that I had already figured out how to control myself and I really needed to be potty trained and kind of work that out but I was too lazy to kind of do that and she um was working on that process with us so I don't know why I remember that I don't know why probably because it's my earliest memory of feeling like I snowed over my mother just now I just like I made her do some extras here for my own comfort because of diapers. I remember that so clearly. And that's the earliest thing I remember. I don't even know if I remember anything even remotely around that time other than that one memory. <laughs> kind of makes me feel like a piece of crap. Ah, piece of crap. Crappy diaper. All right, I really need to stop. <laughs> What's your favorite season? City girl or country girl? Autumn, fall is my favorite season. Um... Although it's been said that here in the South, there are four seasons, which is almost summer, summer, still summer, and Christmas. Those are the four seasons in the South. But in your terms of what y'all would know as four seasons, fall slash autumn is my favorite season. Um, and I guess country girl, because I don't really like the country country, but I don't really like the city city, but I'm kind of always wanted to like be close to a city so I can have all the fun of a city but then like be in the country so that I could have the seclusion and um sometimes my mouth same speed don't don't understand um so that I could have the seclusion of the south like as with the south of the country at night and things like that so Kelly Joe. Perking a little under the weather, but still doing good. I hope you're perking better. Don't be perking puny. I hope you're perking better soon. Um, do you have a favorite book? Harry Potter series. What's one of your favorite qualities about yourself? Um, if we are going with being superficial and we're saying physical qualities about myself, my favorite would be my cheekbones. Because you can see, like I'm not wearing any contour, but you can kind of see like my cheekbones. This side too. I'm not wearing contour, but you can see them contoured out. I like that. I think it's cool. I like my cheekbones. But if we're talking about non-physical uh, qualities in terms of what's my favorite quality about myself, empathy. I really, really, it's, it also makes life very difficult in a lot of different ways. Um, but empathy is my favorite quality about myself because it makes me able to do what I do in the mental health field, in the spiritual field, psycho-spiritual field, with this and everything that I do to be helpful to people. It is like the number one most important thing really that, I'm, that I would have and be able to do. And so I really like that about myself. Um, do you have a favorite time period in history? If the time period of Atlantis and Lemuria and all of that stuff really existed, then, because I don't know for sure, I guess nobody knows for sure, then, um, yeah, that would be my favorite in history. So, yes, yes, yes. Okay, Comfort Doll. I know that when I do touch readings on people, I can almost never accurately read people who are close to me. Does that happen when you do tarot on loved ones? Or um, do you... Do you not read for loved ones? I'm trying to learn to use personal tarot deck, but so many folks interpret differently. What source did you learn from? Um, so, yeah, if I am too, too close to a matter, too invested in a matter, too tied to a matter, then it gets harder to read the matter more accurately. So I can't really read for myself. I can read for family members, but again, the, the tighter the issue, the more convoluted it might become. Um... In terms of uh, how did I learn tarot and interpret tarot, I am self-taught, um, and 
So I don't really know where to, to point you in the direction necessarily to learn from. There are so many different interpretations of cards and there are so many things like that people learn differently. And that doesn't mean that one interpretation is right and another is wrong. It means whatever fits for you and works for you to get accurate responses for you is the one you go with. Um, and so that's what it is, you know, it, regardless of, of what, you know, someone in a, a school might say or somebody teaching a course on it might say Alaska girl I know you haven't done many true crime videos but how do you feel um the ones you've done went and would you consider doing more especially on infamous cases so I've only done like one or two and I feel like they went pretty well and I am open to doing more However, like for those of y'all that watched the Unsolved Mysteries one that I did, um, it seemed like hardly anybody watched that, but of the people that watched it, they really were into it and enjoyed it and wanted more. So that puts you in a, in a weird kind of space as someone who does videos. Um, I would say some of the other YouTube, uh, YouTube, some of the other Unsolved Mysteries things, it's almost like you know what happened and you know who did it, but you don't know how they did it. And so part of me feels like I almost don't want to go down that rabbit hole until I start developing within myself an ability to use tarot to do things like determine cause of death or things like that where I might be able to give you some more details around things that might have happened. Because otherwise, just saying so-and-so passed away and I think so-and-so was involved, y'all might be like, yeah, I could tell that from that episode. Like, I know. So, I mean, what more would I be able to say with the tarot? So, I'm, I might have to revisit and learn more about tarot within my own way of doing it to say, okay, is there a way, a system that I can come up with that I can work with the cards to kind of develop my own way of determining some of those other types of details like cause of death and things like that, that might make those readings easier and more useful. Um, so I'm looking into all that. That might take some time because that's like a, a study and practice kind of idea. So, but I have it on my mind. I have it on my mind. All right. What's Perkin mean? We did go over that in the first video, so I will skip on that. But hello to you with W Wicked Chick. There you go. Wicked Chick. Hello to you. And SMB, how do you like being a Chihuahua mom? We have two that don't act like yappy Chihuahuas at all. And most, most people hear from the breed name and think the worst. We adore ours. I love mine. I could have all the Chihuahuas in the world. Give me all the babies. Give me all the babies. I want all the puppies. Yes. Honeymoon. Have you ever gotten a past life reading? If so, please share. Um, yes and no. I have... But it didn't give me details about past life. It more said like you had too many lifetimes doing this kind of a thing and that kind of a thing and this kind of a thing. And so in this lifetime, you really wanted to explore the spiritual world kind of a thing. So I had one that basically touched on that in ways that told me what was going to you know, be my forte in this life. Um, but yeah, so I don't have any like cool juicy things to report about past life stuff. So, for everybody worrying about how long this video is going to be, if anybody is worrying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm trying, I'm trying. Um, but we're getting close to, to getting through all the questions. So, no worries. No worries. Um, did you ever fly around out of body while you slept as a child? Not that I can remember. No. From Biker Babe. Um, from Rabina Ferrand Adams. Are your dogs rescues? One of them is. Two of them are not. Um, how does tarot work? Oh, Lord, I'd have to. Ooh. I have a video about my process on tarot. So if you want to watch that, um, maybe a month ago or so, I don't know. But I have a video on, on my process with tarot. That might answer your question better than what I could do here. Silver Worf. 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 Silver Worf. Hey, Silver Worf. Silver Wolf. I'm sorry. Lord, help me, Lord, help me. Jesus. Lord of mercy. 
Have you used other tarot decks in the past, and would you consider using a different deck? If so, which one? I've used all kinds of decks, but I like the Rider Waite type decks the best. And yes, I would consider using a different deck in the future. If so, which one? I want to make my own deck. Talk about merch ideas. I want to make my own deck. One day. One day. That would be a hell of an undertaking, both in terms of time, effort, and money so i'm not in a position to be able to do that right now so don't be pushing for it too early unless you're gonna fund it because lord help me <laughs> that's a, that's a big one i do work full time twice right now so um but in the future yes i want to make my own i want to make my own so i would use a different deck i would use mine all right dana s if you could meet anyone famous slash well known who is no longer with us who would it be martin luther king jr martin luther king jr yes 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 i've loved that man for so long and like all through school has he has been like growing up like in terms of spiritual and religious beliefs he's been a go-to then going through school in terms of um his humanitarian and civil rights beliefs and um, just beliefs about people in general and how human behavior and spirituality kind of are connected and all this kind of stuff and how to treat people and yada, yada, yada. I've always been into and, and so just from all different aspects all through life, it's always been him. Absolutely. Absolutely. Last question, y'all. We have made it. Barbara Tatum. And so, yes, in, as of thus, as of now, as of 4.10 p.m., then we have, this is all the questions that I had, over 80 questions in part one and two. Any suggestions for someone who has some sort of gift but doesn't know how to use it or hone it? I've always known things. I've seen things that could happen in the future. Blah, 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 blah. I'm not going to read it all just because, I, you know, I know the time. But I have read this comment. Um, so she says, I'm thinking I'm finally ready to start sharpening this tool I seem to possess, but have no idea where to even begin with that. It sounds so reductionistic, I know, but just practice it. Just do things. Try things out. Try reading somebody. Try reading somebody without tools. Try reading somebody with tools. Try reading a situation. Try looking into something. Try making predictions. Try... Any kind of thing that you feel drawn to and led to, try. Learn better spiritual hygiene, you know, with meditation and prayer and cleansing and things like that that can help help yourself um, to clean off any kind of negativity so that you can be a better uh, a better tool in and of yourself as you push forward in this, you know, find ways to heal yourself as you get rid of the negative crap within yourself that you need to heal. It makes room for new things such as growing and honing in on a skill. So, you know, those kinds of things, spiritual hygiene, emotional healing, and practicing whatever you're drawn to. Um, are like the three ways to start really getting started into something. This is a very slow process, a slow build, but it's something. Yes. So, we have answered all the questions. Ah! Yay! We've got through it. We've got through it. So, if you're still here, let's see. How do we come up with a fun little reward system of sorts? If you're still here, put a... Let me look at some emojis. What kind of emojis do I want in this chat? Let's see. If you're still here, put the crystal ball emoji in the chat. The crystal ball emoji if you're still here and you made it to the end. So, yes... And, of course, if you would like a private reading with me, then um, the description box below will give you everything you need to be able to book yourself. And remember, from the first uh, part one video that we just did, I now have discovered that I can work um, through my guides to channel um, some basic levels of information and things that you might not 
might want to know from crossed over loved ones. So um, now that's something that I am uh, looking more into and practicing more and having some some success with that. So for people who are looking for that too, um, I am you know opening up to that now. Um, but yeah, all right, y'all. Y'all are the real MVPs over here watching both of these things all the way through. It's 58.58 right now, which means I need to shut up before it turns into an hour. So don't be a stranger. Come back and see me. I'll talk at you later. And I love you. Bye. Love you. Mean it. Love you. Mean it. Love you. Mean it. And bye. <laughs> With this new microphone, new microphone, new microphone. Right here. Right here. <laughs>